Hi, I'm Matt with Sons of Liberty Gunworks. We're here today to talk a little bit about the Knox muzzle device and our 13.7 and 13.9 barrel combinations. What we want to cover first is our two muzzle device versions. We have a Knox no mount and a Knox mount version. Both of those are built around the same idea of a three prong flash hider with a directional muzzle compensation device. What we have is the no mount and a mount version. Those two muzzle devices we'll talk about a little bit later but what that affords you on a 13 7 inch barrel is a 16 inch overall length. That gives us the ability to afford a shorter package with a longer, more functional muzzle device. Given that most of the muzzle devices we've seen up to date have been more functional due to their length and mass, they afford you a little bit more act on the gun energy. So that gives us a short package with a functional muzzle device on a short enough gun to be pin and welded and still be legal length as a rifle. So you don't have to SBR it, you don't have to worry about any of that legal uh, tax stamp. So beyond that, we have the 13.7 and 13.9 models. 13.7 is available in 5.56. Our 13.9 models will be available in a 6.5 Grendel and a 6.5 Creedmoor coming soon. The pin and weld uh, is done here in house by us, um, but it also affords us the ability to tune these guns with a timing on the muzzle device. So the timing on these muzzle devices is either right-handed, which would be a 12 o'clock and a three o'clock orientation, a left-handed, which would be a 12 o'clock and a nine o'clock orientation, or a neutral, which would be 10 and two o'clock. Two different versions are given that as a no mount Knox affords us a unsuppressed application or a pencil barrel, such as our Swamp Fox, where we don't have to worry about uh, suppressed applications or any of that. With a suppressed key mount version, you can use any of your key mount mountable Sandman series suppressors uh, or any of the key mount versions except the Nomad. The Nomad does not work at this time because the muzzle device is slightly longer than the internal dimensions of that Nomad suppressor. So to give you an example, we have a Sandman K here to index, and that's it. Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics here with Sons of Liberty Gunworks. And I want to talk to you guys specifically about what makes the Knox muzzle device uh, advantageous. There's a lot of great muzzle devices out there. Uh, no one's going to dispute that. However, one of my favorite muzzle devices that I've been using frequently recently. Hey, everybody. His watch. Oh, okay, good. I literally right just <laughs> muted it. What the? How do I mute my watch? Well, I did. Wait, what are you? What are you doing? Okay, yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey everybody, Aaron Count Sage Dynamics here with Sons of Liberty Gunworks. I want to talk to you specifically about the Knox muzzle device. What makes the Knox muzzle device advantageous over some of the other muzzle devices that are out there, specifically or especially if you are a user of dead air suppressors. Uh, there are a lot of great muzzle devices out there, no one's going to dispute that. However, what I found with my time using the Knox is it gives me a lot of the features that I want and I don't get any of the negative drawbacks that usually keep me away from some muzzle devices that have a break or comp-like feature. So one of the things we've seen recently, uh, not so recently, uh, in the technology behind muzzle devices is trying to create a hybrid system that combines a flash hiding ability, but also provides gas direction in order to help you keep your muzzle flat. Anytime you're shooting a rifle, uh, you'll appreciate how effective the muzzle device is based on how much your sight picture is gonna rise shot to shot to shot to shot. So the flatter a rifle can stay, the more advantageous it's going to be because you get a return to point of aim quicker. One of the trade-offs traditionally that we usually have with that is a muzzle device that, that compensates well generally will provide a more concussive blast to the shooter which can make uh, fellow shooters at the range not like you very much or if you think about a home defense or duty application shooting in an unsuppressed firearm with that particular type of muzzle device in an enclosed space could also be uh, could also be very damaging to your hearing and even temporarily affect your vision it's not something that we want so if you're going to do a hybrid muzzle device it's going to be able to provide both features it's got to be able to uh, limit the flash as much as possible based on barrel length, ammunition, things of that nature. Uh, but it's also going to be able to give you the advantage of keeping that sight picture as flat as possible to allow follow-up shots. The great thing about the Knox, my two favorite features of it really is one is, uh, and there's two different versions, there's one that is suppressor, it can be a suppressor host for dead air chemo systems and another one that is uh, for non-suppressor host applications. 
being able to use my dead air cans on this, I love dead air's QD system, one of my favorite QD systems out there. Uh, cans go on, cans come off, very simple uh, application for that. But just shooting it unsuppressed, and that's where you really get your advantages from the muzzle device specifically, uh, it definitely changes the way felt recoil behaves. And the Knox is able to, even on short guns, uh, so I generally shoot a shorter rifle, like the Sage Edition rifle that you get from Sons of Liberty Gunworks. This is 12.5. I run the Knox muzzle device on it, and it tames that muzzle flash considerably, especially in low-light applications, or even more specifically, shooting under night vision. Night vision magnifies light, so any muzzle report at all, any flash, is going to be magnified by that. And I don't want it to disrupt my vision. So the Knox gives me good muzzle control. It keeps the muzzle flat, but it doesn't allow for enough fireball, actual visual flame out of the gun, to affect my ability to use how quickly it gives me my sight picture back. So if it provides a great deal of compensation, I can get my sight picture back quickly, but if I'm coming back inside of a fireball because it just has such a great report, then I'm kind of losing the advantage I just gained. And the Knox has the right balance between hiding that flash and providing me the compensation I need to get the muzzle flat again. Another thing that sometimes limit muzzle devices is the length of the rifle system that they're on. Uh, Sons of Liberty offers a 13.7 uh, 13 inch barrel length. They can pin and weld the Knox muzzle device bringing you to a non-NFA legal length of 16 inches. Uh, some muzzle devices, like I kind of prefaced, they don't like shorter barrels or they may not behave uh, effectively enough to make it worth it on a longer barrel. Uh, using the 13.7 with the Knox attached, I can run a shorter suppressor such as a Sandman K. I still get the advantage of uh, decibel reduction from the suppressor, but I don't lose a lot of my maneuverability. With the gun unsuppressed, the muzzle device is not needlessly long in order to provide that 16 inch legal length, and it's still gonna give me the performance I need, and it's gonna to work in concert well with the barrel length, the suppressor, the gas system length, uh, and the other features that we're worried about when it comes to not only muzzle control, uh, but also overall functionality of the rifle and proper usage of the gas, proper expenditure of the gas, without needlessly um, causing any secondary effects such as muzzle flash that would affect you, the shooter. On shorter guns, SBR specifically, we do limit ourselves to real estate. And this is something where muzzle devices can create problems that you may not have prepared yourself for. If I'm gonna run a white light, and my personal philosophy is every single firearm needs a light because it's dark at least half the day and you don't know what situation you're gonna need a rifle in. So it's always good to have the ability to PID and get vision. Uh, if the muzzle device is overly concussive, it can actually cause damage to your weapon light. That's not something you want. With the Knox running it this far out, the reason I'm gonna put my light that far forward is so I don't get a lot of suppressor shadow when I run a suppressor or even shadow from the muzzle device itself. And just because of the limited real estate on the shorter gun versus a longer gun, I kinda have to run my accessories that far out anyway to be able to activate them with my support hand. Uh, but the Knox, no matter how I time it, it doesn't cause concussive damage to my lighting system. Of course, quality of light factors into that. I'm running a mod light on this rifle, uh, but I'm able to put the suppressor on, take the suppressor off, run it suppressed, run it unsuppressed, and I don't have any uh, concu- it doesn't create too much of a concussive force to damage my accessories. Now, when it comes to rifle, I'm a right-handed shooter, so I have my knock set up for right-handed shooting. Uh, because the way the, the, the port relationship works on the Knox muzzle device, you can also neutral time it or time it for a left-handed shooter. What that basically means is if you time it for a right-handed shooter, it's going to provide maximum recoil assistance for a right-handed shooter. If you time it neutrally, the rifle will work well on either side of the body, but maybe not as well as if it was timed for a specific side. So there is a trade-off there. And of course, if you time it for a left hand, it's a left-handed shooter. Uh, one of the concerns people sometimes have with a muzzle device like this is they think, well, if I time it for right hand, but I have to shoot off my left shoulder, how bad is that going to affect me? And I can tell you from experience using this rifle for teaching my own personal practice that even though my rifles are all set up for right hand time, I don't lose a considerable or even a, a, an appreciable amount of time in my sight picture returning to point of aim on my left shoulder. So yes, you do notice a difference, but it's not so dramatic or drastic that it would make you be like, okay, I need to take this muzzle device off or I need to neutral time it. My advice to most shooters is be go ahead and set it up for whatever your dominant side is and get in some reps, get some experience shooting it on that other side so you can kind of make an educated decision on do I want to leave it right side, left side time or I want to neutral time it out.